Hello, my name is Mithali Pulakundam and this is my science fair project. It's about neurotransmitters correlation with music. First, we'll start with abstract. In this experiment, the overall idea is to see if listening to music can have an impact on a person's mood. When the ears hear music of preference, they send a signal to the brain which releases a common neurotransmitter known as dopamine. This induces a chemical response in the brain, resulting in a trigger in the limbic system part of the brain. The limbic system controls the emotional responses of the host, theoretically resulting in a shock in the joy receptors momentarily. This experiment tests the theory to see if this formula can be applied for practical purposes. Introduction Approximately 68% of the North American population claims to listen to music on a daily basis. Audual content is used in almost everything, but the science and psychology behind humanity's music interest is beyond captivating. This experiment studies similar topics. Hypothesis. It was hypothesized that in this experiment, the spike in emotion would show itself through the variation of the subject's mood from the first question's response to the second question's response due to the dopamine release to enhance the subject's mood during the experiment. The conditioned outcomes may be affected by the extended time between the second mood inquiry and the music stimulation in the brain. If this instantaneous mood variation had been for a longer amount of time, the Google form would be more accurate. However, this isn't the case and we will still have a relatively reliable outcome. Background research. One of the most common chemicals released in the brain when listening to different genres of music is known as dopamine. Dopamine is a type of neurotransmitter in the brain that is a chemical release triggering a happy emotion. Neurotransmitters are a way of communication between the nervous system and the brain, commonly known as the body's messenger wavelengths. Lengths. When listening to music, the different wavelengths that come from the music affect the subject's mood in different ways. When there is a high-pitched music playing, the produced wavelengths are shorter, and when there are low-pitched music, the produced wavelengths are longer. Some other common terms referring to wavelengths of sound are peak and tro. Simply put, the peak is part of the wave that is at its highest point and the tro is a part of the wave that's at its lowest. Sound waves. There are many different types of sound waves, but there are four main ones. The first one is longitudinal sound waves, mechanical sound waves, pressure sound waves, and the last one is transverse waves. Next, we'll be talking about the materials needed for this experiment. There is a Google form needed for this experiment, and this can be found on my slideshow. And if you have this Google form, the only other thing you need is 30 to 60 learning subjects without ear. So we're talking about the procedure. If you have access to the Google form, you give out the Google form to all the subjects and have them fill it out. However, if you don't have the Google form, there is a list of all the questions you will need to add in the Google form right here on my poster. So if you want to conduct this experiment and don't have access to the Google form, here are the questions that you will need. A little bit about what is included in this Google form is there is a first question which asks how the subject is feeling on a scale of 1 to 10. The next question is their favorite genre of music and it will take them to a separate section of the Google form which consists of a link to a song of the chosen genre. And after listening to the song, they will reevaluate the question they answered earlier about how they're feeling to see if the dopamine release triggered any happiness in the joy receptor. So, um, next we'll be taking a look at my observations. I've got three graphs that I'll explain really quickly. So, this first one is the individual comparison and seeing how they relate to the first question to the second question. So, if subject one chose 6 out of 10 in the first one, and then 7 out of 10 in the second one. Their mood fluctuation would equal 1 because their mood grew 1. Subject 53 had a mood fluctuation of 4, which is the biggest out of all of my 60 subjects. And individual 12 had a mood fluctuation of negative 4, so their answer decreased. And so because they're on opposite sides, one is negative four, one is positive four, I can come to the conclusion that this only happened because of exterior things and this shouldn't be used in my experiment. At first glance, this information given from the testing seems almost inconclusive. So if we took a deeper look at subject number 12, we can see that 
In the Google form, the response for the very first question was 9 out of 10, but after listening to the song, their mood suddenly took a nosedive to 4 out of 10. Subject number 54, however, had a starting mood of a 6 out of 10, but after hearing the song, their mood suddenly increased to 10 out of 10. It's best to assume that there are misclicks or fluctuations that aren't dependent on the music and this experiment. So I took all of this into consideration when I was finding my analysis, and I figured out there were two different ways to find the average for a subject. So the first way was to find the average. I added up all of the numbers from each of the questions, and the numbers were 344 and 372. And then I found the difference of the two and then divided by the number of subjects, and I got a full answer of 0 0.4. I think the more efficient and the better way of finding the, the average subject's answer was to find the mode. So I found fluctuation answers. So out of the 60 subjects I had, I wrote out all of the numbers and then I found that zero was the most common one. Conclusion. Any signs of increased emotion are only shown in the first two seconds after administration of the neurotransmitter trigger in the limbic system. The time period varies from subject to subject as well as depending on the different dopamine triggers that they used. The two seconds is an estimate as the trigger in this case is something as simple as listening to a song. Larger impacts can arise if the subject is exposed to familiar sound wave patterns, which means listening to music that they recognize and find familiar. So the way the Google form was formatted, the subject had to go back, read the question, and reevaluate what their answer was, and that took longer than two seconds for most of the subjects. So I think this is why some of the outcomes were different and they were varying. And so overall, I think the hypothesis was partially correct and partially incorrect. There are some gathered methods to ensure more accurate results. None of the given methods can be administered in a school, but they still may be of relevance in a laboratorical facility. The main method of testing on the subjects is using a magnetic resonance imaging machine, more commonly known as an MRI machine. The MRI scan can be filtered and zoomed in to solely focus on the limbic system part of the brain. The limbic system controls behavioral and emotional reactions to simulations, and studying in the spikes can result in a better understanding and testing of the formula briefly explained in the abstract section. The way this experiment tests is the dopamine levels and what impact it has on the subject's mood. By using an MRI scanner, the dopamine and other neurotransmitting chemicals can trigger the limbic system to signal joy receptors to ignite. So using an MRI machine, we can tell if the dopamine is really released. Thank you for listening to my presentation on neurotransmitters correlation with music.